Alright. Hi friends. I know you've already seen this, but get to listen to it again. Presenting extracellular matrix for the second time and third time a bit. Um, so extracellular matrix is basically the substance that surrounds all the cells on the outside area, which is why I put the prefix extra means outside or beyond. And extracellular matrix can be found in all living tissues, but it is more densely populated in connective tissue. So if you try to find a lot of it, look in connective tissue. That's why later when I talk about pig's bladder, that's why they use that to harvest extracellular matrix. So initially it was thought that extracellular matrix was kind of a pointless part of the body. Uh, it was just there for structural support. They didn't really see the point to it. but as you will know by the end of this. It is more than that, it is more than just collagen and proteins that I didn't list here because they're long. It is a lot more than that. It actually has the ability to differentiate and the cells that it is growing, they will differentiate, look differently, they'll change how they look to what their function is. So if you have heart cells or intestine cells that you're putting, okay, pause. If you have intestine cells that you're putting on the heart, it will turn into heart cells. There we go. They're kind of tricky. All right. So, if you are <coughs> injured in any way, your body has its own way of healing, as you are aware. But if you have a more severe injury, you can use extracellular matrix in the medical field to repair your wound, and it won't leave as much as a scar. I misspoke last time. It can leave a little bit of a scar, but not as much as it normally would. So this was discovered by Dr. Badalek, and he went here to Purdue, so he's awesome. Is, am I allowed to say your name right now? His name? You can say it. Yours. Yeah. No. Okay. Well, yeah, my name's there all over. Okay, so well, as Dr. Arvish said last time, he does have three awesome degrees. He has his MD, PhD, and DVM, so that's awesome. He's incredibly smart. So what he did, he was, in after he was started practicing, he got kind of bored with the typical appointments you would see, and he wanted to do something more different. So what he did is he started working in cardiology, and he had a dog named Rocky. It was not his. It was the labs, I guess. And he took small intestine and put it onto the heart. And this was due to the fact that the small intestine is similar tubing to the aorta of the heart. So that's <coughs> why he chose those two uh, tissues. And when he put the small intestine tubing, or tissue over the aorta, he was expecting the dog to die because it was kind of a severe surgery. However, the dog didn't die, lived for another eight years. So he was really curious about how this entire process worked, how the small intestine tissue was able to hold up the function that an aorta normally would. He wanted to go back into the tissue and take a look at it, but he also didn't want to torture Rocky, so he didn't. Instead, he did the same experiment with 14 other dogs, and they all had similar results. They all lived, and he had the chance to go back in and look at his work. This is where things get interesting. So he took a little slide, or like sample, put it on the slide to look at it <coughs> with a microscope, and it was really incredible what he saw. He so initially he took the small intestine cells, put it over the aorta, and instead of seeing the small intestine tissue, he saw aorta cells. And those two tissues, you can't really mistake for one another. Um, yes. So that was really impressive, and that sparked his interest more, and he realized he'd be working with small intestines and aortas for quite a while. <laughs> so just some warning, some disturbing pictures, maybe, I don't know, I don't think they're too gross. So this is what extracellular matrix looks like. It comes in two forms. Right here, you have the sheet form, and that is ready to go and be inserted into a patient. It is, um, oh, I'll talk about that in my next PowerPoint, never mind. And this is the dry powder form. If you hear people talking about magic pixie dust, this is what they're referring to. And then this is before and after picture of someone that tried this. It was actually first done with somebody that accidentally cut off their finger, and the doctor said, oh, hey, we're going to amputate your finger. And he didn't like that answer very much, so he searched for second opinion, and he found extracellular matrix, and 
a few months later, after um, adding on the extracellular matrix, he was able to regrow the skin, the fingernail, and the bone. It's pretty impressive, powerful stuff. Okay, so I have a question because yes. this is, that's not the original tip? No. It was okay, so that's... Completely regrown. Pixie Dick's uh, dust on that. <laughs> and that's what that... I was thinking the finger was put back on. Nope. Not oh at all. Oh my it's, gosh. It's another term for extracellular matrix in this field is regenerative medicine. That's how it's used. So it was completely severed off and regrew. It was covered, kept healthy, regrew completely. So now we'll get to this case. Um, this is where extracellular matrix, one of its most famous cases, I guess. This is a Marine, and he was injured while he was overseas, and he had 80%, I believe, of his muscle taken off. And normally, if you have that severe damage, they recommend amputation, which they did in this case. He went, he wasn't okay with this answer. He wanted his leg. So he went through rounds of physical therapy, wasn't really recovering. And then he found out about extracellular matrix. He went in, went through another round of physical therapy just to make sure there wasn't anything more he could do on his own without that. So it was kind of like the pre-stages, pre-data before the research was done. He was kind of signing up as guinea pig. So after he went through his second round of physical therapy, he got the extracellular matrix put into his leg. And pretty soon he started seeing muscle growth which they didn't think was possible. So you can clearly see from this experiment that extracellular matrix does allow for muscle and tissue to regrow. And then one last picture. I thought it was pretty cool. This is another case. I don't know what happened to this individual, but it looks pretty nasty. So I think that's the bone. I don't know. So yes, they put on, I believe it was the powder form, and it started to regrow with uh, multiple weeks of treatment, and you can see it's closing up there. So, now I'll take any questions that you might have left over from last time. Yeah, questions? Yeah, I, I'm still, uh, the finger, I thought the tip was put back on and helped the two ends grow, but that was new tissue. Mm -hmm. that, that's even more important. <coughs> yeah. Do you know if they've seen um, any, like, injuries with excessive, like, tissue proliferation? Did you I, hear that question? If it grew too much after the extracellular matrix. Um, I haven't seen, from the studies I've looked at, I haven't seen that. And I believe this is a term I'm pulling from my brain from Bio 110. It's like where the cells can sense each other so they don't overgrow. I can't think of the term. I changed my mind. So I don't think so from what I've seen, but it's a good question. Yeah. Do you know about how much it is to get done? I'm yeah. It's close. That's going to be part two, right? Yep, part two. I, I ask that same because it's natural. Like, okay, is this phenomenally priced or not? Yeah, it's really hard to find the pricing. Yeah. How good is it? Is UCM good at repairing bone? Like, say somebody had lost a portion of their bone. How good is it at replacing portions of bone without taking a bone graft from another part of the body? Right. You wouldn't need a bone graft. Um, there hasn't been much, too much in humans, but in mice, he's been able to like regrow the bone. Um, just because it's taking, extracellular matrix is basically simulating the stem cells from the bone marrow to grow. So since it's already in contact with the bone, it has the whole source of stem cells so it'd be able to regrow. I don't know numbers for how efficient it is, but it's possible. 